In today's video, we're talking about the nine best ways to redeem your chase points for maximum value. And in case you are wondering, this video is not sponsored by Chase. In fact, it's not sponsored by anyone. It's just made by me, the guy who's had way too many credit cards, all in the hope though, that I can teach you a thing or two about your miles and points so that your next trip, either yourself or your family or your friends could be as close to, if not 100% free. Now folks, I wanna do something fun in this video. I'm gonna ask for some audience participation. So if you don't mind, right after you watch this, pause and comment down below how much value you think I could get for my 1.6 million Chase Ultimate Reward Points. Is it A, between five to $10,000 worth of cash value? B, between 15,000 and 35,000 of cash value? C, between 50 and $100,000 worth of cash value? Or D, between 150,000 to $300,000 worth of cash value? And stick around to the end of the video as I reveal for you A, the most valuable way to use your Chase Points and how much value I think I could get for my 1.6 million Chase Ultimate Reward Points. Now, before I can jump into the nine best ways to use your chase points, let's go ahead and the level set so that we all understand what exactly points are worth. You probably see it all the time. Sign a bonus here for points, sign a bonus there for miles. But what exactly is the value of that? The value can be derived using the cent per point formula. And that is taking the dollar value of whatever the redemption is, subtract out any tax and fees if it's an award flight, and divide that by the number of points used and multiply by 100. So as a very simple example, let's say you had an opportunity to spend either $100 for tickets or use 10,000 points. 100 divided by 10,000, multiply that by 100, that will give you a cent per point value of one. And in the credit card miles and points game, one cent per point is the average baseline. That is par. And the general rule of thumb in the credit card game is if you're over one cent per point, you're doing good. If you're under, you could probably do better. But don't worry, in today's video, we are going to be stack ranking all nine methods on the illustrious and scientifically rigorous JFT scale from one to five. Now that we're all level set, go ahead and pop a squat, be sure to tap that little thumb icon, and go ahead and open up your Chase app or Chase on your desktop. If you look here, I'm actually gonna go in through my Chase Sapphire Reserve. That's important to note because there are some slight differences in value depending on which Chase cards you're using, whether it's gonna be the Sapphire Reserve, Sapphire Preferred, Chase Freedom, or the Business Inks. But for the purpose of this video, I'm looking at it through the lens of the Sapphire Reserve, which is quote unquote their top tier card and where I think you can get the most bang for your buck. I will do my best to also call out some of the slight nuances for others of you who have some of their other cards. Coming in at number nine, we have pay with points. So on here, I'm gonna go ahead and click the little drop down menu and go into the pay with points option. This redemption option is very straightforward. You can use your Chase points to check out at Amazon or PayPal. All you need to do is link your card to those accounts. You can see on my page that I don't have Amazon or PayPal linked. That's because I don't value the redemption that much. Because if you go down a little bit further, we see that Chase calls out for you the exact value of these points if you use this option. And that is gonna be 0.8 cents per point. Remember earlier the baseline was one cent per point is just average? Well, this is below average I and mean, we don't like below average here. And honestly, there's better ways to be using your chase points if you wanna purchase items through Amazon or PayPal and this option is not it. And so for that, I give this a two out of five JFTs. Number eight, experiences. So what is this? Chase calls these experiences, I just call them tickets to cool events. You can take your points and redeem them to go to things like F1 races or the PGA championship or for culinary experiences. So I guess technically they're experiences, but really it's just ticketing. So let's see what the points are worth if we redeem through these options. Example one, let's say you wanted to attend the PGA championships, a practice round. This would cost you either $55 or 5,500 points. So let's plug that into our formula. $55 divided by 5,500 multiplied by 100, you get a value of one cent per point. Okay, not bad, we're at baseline. We can take a quick scroll of all the other experiences here, but quick eyeball, we can see that most of these are gonna be about one cent per point. This isn't the worst way to use points, but I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity that getting your experience tickets through this experience tab doesn't give you any extra benefits from Chase. Now Chase does have some VIP benefits for their Sapphire card holders at various venues around the country and various other concert events, but those are specific to those locations and events. And it's not as if if you've bought your ticket through Chase Experience, you get those. And so taking all this into account, I would say this comes in at a solid three out of five JFTs. It's not terrible, but it's not the best. In addition, I do know that when you use third-party ticketing, it can be a pain with support. I'm not saying that's the case with Chase in this particular instance, but that's just one thing to note generally. But the next method is by far the most painless way to redeem your Chase points, coming in at number seven, and that's going to be cash back. We'll go to the drop-down menu, 
select cash back and there you go this one is exactly as the name would imply you can take your points and convert it to cash so the example here we're looking at my chase sapphire reserve about 1.6 million points or so would be equivalent to about $16,000 in cash. What I actually really like about this feature is a little bit further down, you can actually transfer the cash directly to a linked bank account. So I have a Schwab brokerage account that's linked up right there. I can go ahead and select convert to cash and it just whoom, transfers directly to Schwab. Let's take this redemption option and plug it into our CPP formula. We have $16,000 over 1.6 million times by 100. That is gonna give you a one cent per point value. Again, very much square in the middle at baseline. So with this method, I would say if you needed cash and if you wanted the easiest way to get your points into something you understand, this would be it. Of course, though, coming at one cent per point, it's not phenomenal, but it's also not bad. It's just average. And so for that, I give it a three out of five JFTs. Now, this is the first example of thinking a little bit more strategically with your points. Remember method number nine, you can use your points on Amazon to pay, but you would only get 0.8 cents per point. Well, that means my 1.6 million points, if I just used through Amazon, would only give me about $13,000 or so of value. But if I just took it as cash, it's $16,000 of value. That's $3,000 right there, which if you weren't too careful, poof, it's gone. However, if you do want to use your points for shopping, there might be an even slightly better way to get more value from these points. That comes in at number six, and that is going to be gift cards. So we're back on the home screen here. We'll tap the drop down menu and we'll go directly to gift cards. The first example we'll look at is getting a Target gift card. Pop into there. Looks like we can spend a thousand points and we'll get a $10 gift card. So we plug that into our CPP formula, $10 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 100 one cent per point. Okay, respectable. Let's look at another example. You can go back and you can actually filter by some of the higher value gift cards. And it looks like Adidas or Adidas, depending on where you are in the world, is giving out gift cards with a bit of a bonus. So we pop into here and see that we can spend $1,275 for a $15 Adidas gift card. Plug that into our formula, $15 over 1,275 multiplied by 100 and you get 1.175 cent per point. Overall, Given that there's potential to go above baseline with some of the bonus redemptions here and there for gift cards, I would say this comes in at about 3.25 out of five JFTs. Historically, gift cards were the worst way to use your points coming in well under one cent per point. The fact that it's at baseline and or above, we just gotta give them kudos for that, for that improvement. And recall earlier, we talked about how you wanna be strategic in the way you use your points. Let's say you wanna buy Adidas shoes. If you use your point through Amazon, you would have got 0.8 cents per point. If you took your points as just cash to then buy the shoes, you would get one cent per point. If you ended up buying Adidas gift card, you would get 1.17 cents per point. To put it really into perspective, that would mean if you took the 1.6 million points, it could have been worth $13,000 could have been worth $16,000 or it could have been worth close to $19,000 if your goal was buying Adidas merch. Of course, that's not necessarily exactly what I would have done, but really folks, you gotta start thinking exactly how you wanna be deploying your points and what the most effective use for you is. Coming in at number five, let's go back to that home screen, hit the drop down menu and select pay yourself back. So with pay yourself back, you can actually use your points and redeem them against your statement for credit. Now this isn't for every single purchase on your statement and it is actually going to vary based on card. So specifically for my Chase Sapphire Reserve, I can redeem my points if I use my card to purchase items at a gas station, grocery store, if I used it for select charities, as well as for my annual membership. So the first example, we'll look at a charge I had at a grocery store. Looks like I spent exactly $9.99, which actually is kind of a weird thing to have been able to spend. But anyway, I could then use 799 points instead to pay for that charge. Plug that into our formula, 999 over 799, multiply by 100, and we will get 1.25 cents per point. And now if you were reading earlier, you would have seen that grocery stores are getting a 25% bonus. So that is that bonus, a 1.25 CPP. The second example we look at is very case specific. That's gonna be being able to use your points for your membership fee. I recently got assessed the annual membership fee on my Sapphire Reserve and that came out to $550. Instead of paying that, I can go ahead and use 44,000 points. And if we plug that into our formula, we would get 550 over 44,000, multiply that by 100, and you will get a CPP of 1.25. I should also call out here for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, there is no bonus for gas, grocery, and select charity, so you will only get one cent per point. And if you have a Chase Freedom, you can only redeem for statement credits if you use your card at select charities, and again, that comes out to one cent per point. 
It is nice that all my redemption offers for the Sapphire Reserve come in at 1.25 cents per point. But remember, this is only because there is a bonus going on right now. If we scroll down to the little terms and conditions, we see that the standard cent per point is actually going to be one cent per point. And because we can't control when exactly these bonuses happen, I would say this would get a solid three 0.25 out of five JFTs. Number five, back to the home screen, hit the drop down menu and select Apple. This one's very straightforward. You can use your points to shop and purchase Apple items. Let's take a look at the first example. We're gonna look at a MacBook Pro 14 inch M2. It looks like here that would cost 133,266 points. So we go ahead and plug that into our formula. We take 1,999, divide that by 133,266, multiply by 100, and we get 1.5 cents per point. That is phenomenal. Now that's a solid redemption option. The only thing I wish would have been nice is if there was more customization that you can attack on here because just getting a 512 gigabyte hard drive for a MacBook, I'd say it's a little bit limiting. The recent M2 MacBook that I bought was actually one terabyte and I actually kind of hope, wish that I was able to put two terabytes on it. But regardless, it looks like your customization options are limited. It is also worth noting here, we also have some discrepancy depending on which card you use. So the Sapphire Reserve comes in at a 1.5 cent per point bonus for a limited at time. The Sapphire Preferred gives you a 1.25 cent per point value if you were to shop through Apple and the Chase Freedoms give you a 1.1 cent per point value if you were to shop through Apple on there. I would say with the Sapphire Reserve, this would come in at a solid four out of five JFTs. However, if you have a Sapphire Preferred or a Freedom, that would certainly pull the score down a bit. And so I would say it probably average and nets out to a 3.5 out of five JFTs. Number three, pop open that drop down menu, go ahead and select into travel. And here is where you can use your points and redeem for travel bookings. And it's important to note up front that this is where I see the clearest distinction between the Sapphire Reserve, Preferred, and Freedom. Up to now, a lot of the bonuses were varied based on time periods, but for travel redemption specifically, the Sapphire Reserve is gonna get a 50% bonus, the Sapphire Preferred is gonna get a 25% bonus, and the freedoms are gonna get a 0% bonus. Well, what does this actually equate to? Well, we'll jump into the first example. So the example here I have is a round trip ticket from Boston to Paris. And we can see that in economy class, this would cost us $2,455. And let's just go ahead and pause here and say that is an outrageous amount of money to fly from Boston to Paris. But regardless, it's an example, so let's get on with it. And if you didn't wanna use cash, you could use points and that would cost 163,633 points. And so we plug that into our formula, $2,455 divided by 163,633 points, multiplied by 100, and you get a value of 1.5 cents per point. So that's where that bonus comes from for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Now let's contrast this to booking the same flight, but let's say you only had a Chase Freedom, which is one of Chase's beginner cards. It would cost the same, $2,455, but the points you would need is 245,495 points. If we plug that into our formula, that would be 2,455 divided by 245,495 points, multiplied by 100, and you would get a value of one cent per point. So this is another example why it is extremely important to have the right credit card strategy in place. Let's say you had a Freedom. Let's say you had maybe a Chase Inc. Well, if you also then had a Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, you could get a 25 or a 50% bonus on your points because you can take those points and combine them and pool them into those respective accounts. And that's actually one of the reasons why I still have my Sapphire Reserve is for that 50% bonus because sometimes, especially flying economy, that it works out more efficiently than using a transfer partner, which we'll get to in a later section. So if you had a Sapphire Reserve, it's 1.5 CPP. Sapphire Preferred is 1.25 and a regular Freedom is just one. And so for that, I'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of five JFTs if we think about using Chase Points as an aggregate to redeem for travel because I don't know which card you have. Now, if you do have a Sapphire Reserve, you're probably close to the four out of five JFTs, but if you only had a Freedom, you would be close to the three out of five JFTs. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel in any way, feel free to check out any of the affiliate links for any of the Chase cards or any travel cards in general down below. Two, this one really surprised me. Go ahead and pop open that drop down menu and click into dining. With this redemption option, it is going to vary depending on which card you have. I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve 
And so if I take a look at all the options presented to me, these are actually very, very high-end restaurants. In fact, a lot of Michelin starred restaurants are on here. It also offers Chase Sapphire private dining events, which are pretty cool events. It looks like you get to meet the chef and the whole shebang. The first example we'll look at is if we booked Alina, I hope I'm not butchering it, which is a three Michelin starred restaurant in Chicago. It looks like a range per person is anywhere from 485 to 495 dollars. And from a point redemption wise, it's anywhere from 32,333 points to 33,000 points. So let's look at the cheapest option, which is gonna be $485 or using 32,333 points. You multiply that by 100 and you will get a cent per point value of 1.5 cents per point. The second example we can take a look at is the Sapphire private dining events. So this one specifically is with Chef Douglas Williams, looks like a tasting, and this is going to cost either $200 or 13,333 points. We plug that into our formula, 200 divided by 13,333, multiplied by 100, and you get a CPP of 1.5. For the Chase Sapphire Reserve, this gets a four out of five JFTs. To be able to consistently lock in a 1.5 CPP is phenomenal. Now, I'm not gonna give a blended score because if you have a Sapphire Preferred as well as a Chase Freedom, you actually don't even have access to the same bookings that the Sapphire Reserve has. And if you had either a Sapphire Preferred or a Chase Freedom, it would just be at a one cent per point value. And so that would just come in at three out of five JFTs. Overall, I think I actually would consider using my points in this fashion. I'm not one to ball out fancy dining every single time, but for special occasions, my fiance and I have gone out to some of these fine dining establishments and for the most part, it is a pretty cool experience. The very first time was a two mission star restaurant, the Leadbury in London. And I still remember there was this deer meatball thing going on. And I was like, ah, I don't know, just the meatball, whatever. Popped into my mouth. I'm telling you folks, there was a damn party in there. The flavor profiles, the presentation, the ambience, kind of all of it was a really, really, really cool experience. From there, we've dined at places like Central, which at one point I think was ranked the number four restaurant in the world. The chef gathers ingredients from all the different bioclimates in Peru or the key in Sydney overlooking the Sydney Harbor Bridge. And so because it is part of my travel experience, I could see myself using these points in that manner. Now, I am certainly not sitting here telling you that you should be doing that if that's not something you're A, already curious in or maybe that is already part of your lifestyle. And coming in at number one, the most valuable way to use your Chase points, pop open the drop-down menu and click transfer partners. And the concept is very simple. You take your Chase points, you move them to one of their travel partners, be it an airline or a hotel, and then you use that airline or hotel's program to book the travel. In the points and miles game, this is where value is unlocked because there are going to be sweet spots in which the points just don't make sense for the cash value of the ticket. Because up until now, Chase has had very good control of how much they're gonna allow you to use your points for. And they're not gonna just get, allow you to have outsized value. They're a company after all. However, when their points leave their system and they go to one of these flight partners, then you can get some crazy value. And that's what we're going to focus on in our next couple of examples here. Now, a question I always get is, let's say you have other credit card points, American Express points, Capital One points, City points, Chase points, Bill points. And you're like, well, how exactly do I know which ones to use where? That's also gonna depend a large on how you want to travel. For me, I do think of Chase more broadly as my hotel partner because they transfer to Hyatt. The only other point program it does is going to be built. But if you don't stay at Hyatt, then obviously it's not gonna be a ton of value for you. On the airline side, there's actually some really good value plays as well. I personally really like Air Canada's program. Virgin Atlantic can get good value out of, Flying Blue, British Airways, but we'll cover it in a little bit later in the video of exactly how you should try to navigate this entire transfer chart. But the first example we'll jump into is going to be using a hotel partner, my favorite, Hyatt. With Hyatt, one of their best ways to use your points is for these all-inclusive resorts. These are places where you show up and the food, the drink, the entertainment, everything is included. You don't have to lift a dime out of your wallet. Of course, be sure to tip, but for the most part though, it costs you nothing once you've made the booking. So with Hyatt, I stayed at one of their properties called the Secrets Merche down in Playa del Carmen. Now this property was incredible. The food was top notch. The drinks were great. The entertainment was there. There were more pools than I could possibly count, and there was a beach. Although in that area, there was some algae going on, so we primarily just stuck to the pool, but it was insane how just amazing this property was. I truly was shocked. 
it comes in at a dollar cost of 712 a night. Instead though, you could book it using higher points, 35,000 high points a night. So let's say right now the Chase Sapphire Preferred has a sign up bonus of 80,000 points. Great, 80,000 points, that's enough for two nights. Once you hit the sign up bonus, so what you would do is go into your Chase portal, transfer your points from Chase to Hyatt, and now you're on the Hyatt program, you would go ahead and book. A quick back of the napkin math would tell us $712 divided by 35,000 points multiplied by 100, you get a value of 2.03 cents per point. That's double the baseline value, and that's absolutely incredible. The fact that Hyatt is able to offer 2 cents per point is good, not just in the point and miles game, but it's especially good considering that it is a hotel. But hey, let's say a tropical vacation in Mexico isn't quite your thing. Let's look at a Hyatt, maybe in the concrete jungle, New York City. Nightly rate, $995. But if we use Hyatt points, that's 35,000. We plug that into our formula, $995, divided by 35,000, multiplied by 100, and we get 2.84 cents per point of value. That is, my friend, chef's kisses. Incredible, one of Hyatt's top tier properties right in Manhattan. Not only are you booking it for free, but you're also getting incredible value for your points on the booking. So we know where to stay when we get on a vacation, but how do we get there? Why, in the front of the cabin, of course. So let's specifically look at Air Canada as a transfer partner. In order to transfer points to Air Canada, make sure you link your Air Canada account to your Chase account. Then select the number of points you wanna transfer, hit next, confirm that this is the amount of points you wanna transfer, next and that's it they say to give about 48 hours for points to show up i think air canada is pretty quick that you should see about it in the next day but you want to give yourself some lead time the other thing i want to say is before you start transferring points away have an understanding of where exactly you want to go and how you want to use the points we'll cover that in just a second so one flight we want to take a look at is maybe the longest flight in the world from new york to singapore aboard singapore airline you're probably thinking but john we're using air canada's program to fly on Singapore Airlines? Yes, Air Canada and Singapore Airlines are in the Star Alliance network. This network comprises of many airlines and oftentimes you can use points from one airline to book for flights of all the others. And sometimes the availability for partners might be more or the overall mile cost on partners might be less than the actual carrier that you're flying. I know it's weird, I don't make the rules, I just play by them. So. We're gonna take a look at a booking from New York to Singapore. We take a look on Singapore Airlines and that would cost $3,701.20. However, if we were instead to use Air Canada to make the same booking, it would only cost us 87,500 miles and 76 Canadian dollars. So we plug that into our formula, $3,701.20 minus the taxes and fees, which is gonna be 76 Canadian dollars, which is equivalent to 55 US dollars. Divide all of that by 87,500 miles, multiply that by 100, and you get 4.16 cent per point four times the value of the baseline points. That right there, folks, is incredible. Now, of course, this isn't the only option you could have used to book this flight. You could have done something like book through the travel portal, which would have given you 1.5 cent per point. You could have done cashback where you took the points and you got a one cent per point value, but yet you're getting an incredible discount with four cents per point if you transfer first from Chase to Air Canada and you use Air Canada to book this flight. Let's look at a second example. This is actually how I'm flying back from China, from Guangzhou all the way to New York City. So this on Air Canada, I booked for 87,000 500 miles, and I also spent about 87 US dollars in taxes and fees. But that same flight, if I booked directly with Etihad, would have cost 43,284 Chinese yuan, or that would be 6,262 US dollars. So let's plug all that into our formula. We take 6,262, we subtract out 87 US dollars for the tax and fees, we divide all of that by 87,000. 500, and then we multiply everything by 100, and we will get 7.06 cents per point. Folks, we are getting seven times the baseline value. Now you might be thinking, well, what if we just use Etihad miles? Sure, you can use Etihad miles. That would just cost you 700,000 Etihad miles instead of 87,500 Air Canada miles. So even in the points and miles game, when you're at the partner level, there are gonna be sweet spots you wanna look for. And now would be a good time to go back to the quiz we asked earlier in the video. 
how much value you think I could extract from these 1.6 million Chase Ultimate Reward Points. Obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and use a transfer partner, and if I use this specific example with Etihad Airways at a seven cent per point value, that's close to 115 thousand dollars worth of value if all i did was book etihad business flying from canada into north america obviously i'm not gonna do that every time and so instead what if it was from new york to singapore and singapore airlines at a four cent per point value that's sixty thousand points and so we see that the answer is going to be c between 50 to 100 ish thousand dollars of value now i'm gonna put a caveat on that though even though seven cent per point value is high I made a video last week talking about build points where I got over 20 cents per point of value transferring to the right flight partners. So I guess it could also be D. Now, Chase doesn't have the same transfer partners as built, namely American Airlines, and so likely it'll be a stretch. But when you're redeeming in the premium category, the cash value fluctuates significantly more than the points on the right partner. And I want to end today's video by giving you guys an idea of how exactly you can find these type of award seats. Because I get a lot of questions of, hey, I've got the points, I've watched your video, I get it, I got a transfer, but how? The short answer is, I know it's been a long video, is Google. But the long answer are these following steps. First, figure out where in the world do you want to go? Do you want to go to Europe? Do you want to go to Asia? Do you want to go to Africa, South America? Because that is going to dictate what type of points you're going to need. So figure out where is that vacation going to be? Step two. How do you want to travel? Is it you and a family of four and all you're doing is trying to fly economy to get there for cheap? Or is it you and a spouse and you want to fly there in business or first class? That's also going to dictate how many total points you're going to need and also it's going to make your job either easier or harder. Step three, now it's time to figure out what points are needed. Remember, all of the major banks, American Express, Citi, Chase, Capital One, Built, they all have points. And so now you need to figure out where do you need the points from. Well, this is where we turn to Google. The easiest way to go ahead and find your award availability is going in and saying, what's the best way to redeem flights to Paris? And one of my favorite blogs is Upgraded Points, and they'll tell you exactly the type of points you're going to need. You need American Express points transferred to this partner. You need Chase points transferred to that partner, because that is going to lay out the roadmap of, okay, these are the sign-up bonuses, and these are the cards I need to get in order to make that redemption. So this is where I would spend a good amount of time trying to figure out what specific cards to pull down for that redemption. The next step, hit the sign up bonus, get the cards, make sure you're hitting the sign up bonuses to pull down 50, 70, 80,000 points. Again, right now, Chase Sapphire Preferred back to a second all time high. And if you wanna support the channel, feel free to check out my affiliate link down below. After you've got the points, start booking. My pro tip here, if you can book in advance, you're gonna have much better luck. Earlier I said, whether you go economy or business is gonna make your life easier or harder. Well, if you want economy, likely going to be easier and you probably could stretch your points for more trips. Whereas for business and first, it's probably gonna be harder because there's not as much availability, but you're gonna be traveling in comfort. And the final step is practice. I, I know it doesn't sound fun, but it is practicing the muscle memory. Because for me, roughly, I know what flight partners I wanna use and I know who flies where with what and what the best value is, but this doesn't come automatic. It is literally thinking, Okay, we want to go to the Maldives. What's the best way to go to the Maldives? It looks like, okay, you can fly Qatar Airways. You can use British Airways to book. You can use Qatar's points to book, or you can use American Airlines miles to book. Oh, it looks like that's the best value. I can transfer points from my built card, or I can get American Airlines miles. All of that might seem like gibberish to you, but for me, it's been muscle memory because I've looked at this over and over again, thinking, okay, this is the optimum way to get to this location. So hopefully that was helpful, folks. If you have any comments, questions, please drop them in the comment section down below and let me know, were you far off in terms of guessing the value of these chase points or were you pretty much dead on? Best luck and I will catch you all next week. Peace.